more. Welcome to Zero Fucks Given. I'm Krista, and joining me today is Carson Block and Freddie Brick. What's up? I thought you were going to say welcome to the pleasure chat. <laughs> I almost did. It's a slippery slope. Do you frequent the pre the uh, pleasure chest? What's that? What? Do you frequent the pleasure chest? I think he's saying frequent. Frequent. <laughs> Oh, really? I oh. go away for like a few days. And your accent gets this muddled. And Bro, that's not how they speak in Mexico. Like, I don't know what frequent. And I'm like, let me be the interpreter here. Yeah, no, I mean. Tomato, gonna, tomato. I mean, really, guys. I don't even, I've never heard of it. Nobody, anybody not even Scottish people even, say frequent. Not even British people. No. I don't know where you're from. It's it's the, you're picking up that Mexican accent, dude. From, Is that? From being in Puerto Vallarta. Uh, too much time. Yeah, no, we were down in Mexico. We were um, we were shooting the pilot for short sellers abroad, um, and um, I got to tell you, um, the pay pegging down there is is not everything I was hoping it would be. So, uh, well, you know, you're a little bit too close to a touristy area. Right. You, you got to get well, a little bit more off the so beaten. Wait, where were you guys? To where like the truly depraved short sellers. Right. Would be. Um, Where do they go? <laughs> well, we're not we're not going to say yeah. the name of the city because, <laughs> yeah. or, you know, but it's uh, it's very. I mean, it would definitely make the Trump shithole countries yeah. uh, list. Wow. It definitely would. Um, but anyways, what did you guys do over Thanksgiving? Wait a minute, stop. Didn't you like text me about how? Like you were exercising in Mexico and you basically, why don't we talk so, just okay, a we, little bit? We, just can, hold on. we can talk yeah. about that. So, so well, his, and it's a big deal because his exercise is very infrequent. <laughs> yes. So, okay, so about like three months ago, uh, I was catching up with some old friends from Hong Kong. So, like, one guy lives in Denver, the rest of us live in other parts of the US. So, we're like, all right, we'll all like meet up and hang out together for a weekend. And, Two of the guys are like early 40s, so I'm 35. They've you know, got seven years on me. They've got like kids, you know, shit going on in their lives. And they're like, all right, we'll do a bike ride. So a few things about bike riding. A, it's not like riding a Peloton. Like your bike position oh, is like, like fucking this, which yeah. is just not a lot of fun. B, it's a, it's it wasn't my bike, okay? And I didn't have- Say no more. Yeah, so I, I didn't have like- Oh, uh, if you should have told me, I would have let you ride my uh, six-year-old bike. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll tell you what, like my- That would have so, Someone took a picture and sent it to my wife, so for the podcast, you could see how bad this is, okay? So- um, Oh my God, I, please. So like, they lent me someone's bike shoes, um, Fine. Wait, those, I, I tried those, those, those like a little girl. Those wouldn't like fit in the, uh, <laughs> in the on the pedals there. So I I try to clip in, and it's like oh the cleats whatever like don't match the the fucking little grippy things. So there I am doing a thirty mile bike ride in Teva like sand like flip like sandal things right, which I I'd so seen Lance Armstrong Stupid. riding a bike and he doesn't use that. Yeah. So anyway, I, I do this like thirty mile bike ride. And I'm like the next day I can like barely walk. I'm I'm literally walking around the airport like you after a TSA agent's had a good go at you. Okay. Like I am literally just like, oh, and I, I get on this the flight and I'm like, oh, and the guy's looking at me, he's like, good weekend. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, bro, funny. Oh, it was everything I wanted it to be. So um anyway, I take this as a sign that like I should start to get back into shape. Nah. That's all lies. <laughs> so Anyway, I, I start doing like the Peloton like three, four times a week just to kind of like get some cardio going, get back into a shape. And um, we go to Mexico. And so there's you know, one morning there's a, a HIT class, which I didn't even realize stands for. Uh, yeah, high intensity. Mm -hmm. Interval training. In the, yes. well, yeah, Interval there you go. Training. I get it all wrong. So I go in. Trainers like you know, a small guy about my size and in pretty good shape. It's, uh, it's my wife. And uh, this lady who like turns out it's like you know 59, 60 years old. So it's just like a few little bits and pieces out. I later learned that like you're actually supposed to do with these classes with weights. I didn't even have weights; it was just body weight. And they're doing like all these different intervals, and I'm dying. Like I and I like I can do like a kind of reasonable shift for half an hour on the peloton. So I'm thinking like 
you know, why is this so hard? But it's obviously very different totally kind of different exercise. And... I am fucking dying. Like I can't, uh, the last set of the burpees jumping thing, I can barely do like four in 15 seconds. Like my whole body hurts. And I'm walking around the resort, no joke, for like four days. Like, ugh, I, can, I can't go downstairs. I can kind of like climb upstairs, but not down, which I heard is like similar to a cow. Um, <laughs> I'm like barely able to move. And I, and I surfed that day as well. So I'm like thinking like, oh man, I'm so fucking action packed. I'm gonna do like a hit class You're every back. morning and stuff. Next day I wake up, I'm, I'm just dying. So anyway, um, Soren, who also was on holiday with me, is like, oh, so like, you know, I, I got to try this class. Like who else did it with you? I was like, oh, my my wife and uh, that 60 year old lady who's who's sitting there and he's like, oh, is she, is she pretty beat up? I'm like. Nah, she's, she's, she seems to be doing okay. What a wake up call, man. It's fucking Did he brutal. Do it? He didn't do it, of course not. He's like, does, does, does your wife usually take those hit classes? They're, they're uh, hard. I, yeah, she does like some other yeah. exercise. Um, it's just brutal. Like when you get back into exercising, it's just fucking horrible. And especially when you're not doing, you get muscle memory for like a certain type of workout and exercise oh dude it was fucking brutal so i won't be doing that again i'll just stick to the peloton and maybe some beach weights if uh if i'm that way inclined all right so yeah it's it's tough you guys exercise though what do you think persevere and he would say yes i would say yes mm -hmm. no he said persevere just <laughs> no what like why would I want to work in an office full of people in, you know, better shape than I'm in? <laughs> no, I'm like all for everybody else letting themselves go. That's so I mean, the dudes anyway. I want yeah. the women to look good. Yeah. yeah. No, the women need to look good. I like, gained five you can't, pounds and he's yeah, like, yeah, who's exactly. the fatso? That's, a, that's a bonus cut. You Pretty don't much. lose that that's shit by year end. That's, that's a bonus cut. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, so that that's me getting my ass whooped by uh, a class that um, a sixty-year-old. No, it's no ba barely. Joke. Chris, you don't have to cover your don't, drink. Don't feel bad. Biologically, yeah. she was probably only like fifty-five. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, all right, let's keep on going. No, I actually, I want to, I want to make it like there's an important thing to say here. Um, so listen. We've been living through a little bit of censorship in some of our podcasts. Now, yes. if you watched the last one, if you watched it, you would have seen that all of our t-shirts were blurred. And there was a concern that what was on the t-shirts could, you know, violate the SEC's prohibition against general solicitation. Then a few months before that, there were some like bleeps taken out when we were talking about how really smart people would bleepity bleep with us in our bleepity bleep bleep. But um, the, all of that's behind us now. And what I want to say- What else is behind us? fucking equivocally. Yes. In a way that is completely compliant. All right. Muddy Waters has Monster Alpha. Muddy Waters has Monster Alpha. Okay, let's get this monster here. Should I pull it? Yeah, here we go. This stuffed monster wearing an alpha t-shirt. Okay, only Muddy Waters has this kind of monster alpha. I am certain of it. If you want monster alpha, you must contact Muddy Waters. Okay, so for the first 20 who DM me over uh, you know, like X, Twitter, whatever, you will we will send you monster alpha also so you will have some of muddy waters monster monster <laughs> alpha if you contact us but you can't get monster alpha unless you reach out to muddy waters in it no is way is this a general solicitation well, for investment i'll, I'll put them back it's a general solicitation <laughs> for people who want monster, monster alpha. alpha monster fucking alpha I didn't know where he was going to take this, but um, that, now I see. That's where I'm going with it. That's where he's going with it. First 20 only. First 20 only. You heard it right here. Put him back on the shelf. Well, yeah. he's a then, little then bit our, Then our Monster Alpha product is hard closed. Yeah. Strategy. 
<laughs> okay, well. Uh, I just don't yeah, worry about it. Fine. Yeah, that's fine. Down there. Nice. Um, All right, so back to our regularly scheduled programming. Well, I mean, can we talk about this? <clears throat> okay, describe this for those yeah. who are unfortunate to be. For the tens be... of thousands who aren't watching YouTube. Well, Carson and is... Not YouTube. Yeah, Zeros. Not YouTube. Oh, it's on the site. That's true. Yeah, we prefer people to watch it there. Yeah. Um, it's what not a, gay. It's... If. If it's TSA shirt. Tell us about this. You... I mean, I'm not... I can't see it. Why don't you describe the shirt? What's, what's going on? Well, there's two little stick figures, and one looks like he's having the way... His way with the other guy. Well, one dude. Okay, so one dude standing standing, standing up, up with his hands in the air. Yes. And the other guy is kneeling down. Yes. And feeling looks like he's feeling uh, the other guy's cock. But that's true. And the message is, it's not gay if it's TSA. Now, so, now, someone actually you talked about this, and then someone. No. I, well, I talked yes. about my experience at TSA. Right. Which, and then, which last, then in turn. Then last week, I guess someone somewhere on Xer X'd a video of some guy actually at a TSA checkpoint being searched wearing one of these t-shirts. And that was retweeted to you know me, somebody like at Muddy Waters Re, thought this was brilliant. I so, think it's brilliant. Yeah, no, it's brilliant. So anyway, I bought I bought one of these shirts, and um, somebody else also sent, sent one. You yeah, one. sent one. So now I've got I've got two colors. I've got the heather gray. Yeah. And I've got uh, navy blue. So heather uh, gray. Wait a minute. I, Mr. I get Day. ripped on. Oh, yeah, I get ripped on for having cool shoes, and he I, knows that the color know, is heather gray. I know. I, well, I, what, I, what, are you an interior I, decorator? No. So oh, I had to, you have no idea. I had to buy it. There was a drop-down menu from which you choose the color, and they call it Heather Gray. Oh, this is what this is what he's saying now. Yeah. This is the cover-up. No, this isn't like... He is gay This isn't gay like is when long. you went and bought the vibrating butt plug. It's not <laughs> gay like that, dude. <laughs> oh, anyway. Right. The, the inflatable vibrating butt plug. Come Thank on, you. people come mm -hmm. here for cutting edge finance. What have we got, Krista? We trade. You just saw this. Talk to me. Talk to us about that. Oh, so th this is awesome. So um, I, I happen to notice uh, Nate Anderson tweeted out about this highly unusual uh, press release. So um, there's a company called WeTrade, and um, the 3Q financial report, they put out a press release where they disclose the financial report to be untrue. This is utterly bizarre. So it reads, uh, 29th of November, WeTrade disclosed that the third quarter financial statements released by WeTrade Group were not signed and released by the company management of the, well, by the current management of the company. The data disclosed in the statement is not true as follows. On page one of the financial report, the announcement. So, so they gave they gave the the first one was they gave the address as being somewhere in <laughs> Shenzhen, which is a city in southern China. When in reality, the office is apparently in Beijing. Correct. Um, then they um, gave the financial balance uh, cash uh, with a U.S. Um, financial institution as being about one point four million. No, no, actually, this part of the press release confuses me. So it says that we did we reported cash balance of like one point something million, including U.S. dollar balance of zero. Right. And it says in actuality our U.S. dollar balance is one hundred sixty three dollars. Correct. So it's like, guys, what are you in like fucking fifth grade here? Like you're. <laughs> you yeah, know, like, it's it's like one of the most bizarre things. It's talking about you just kind of like wonder what the. Fuck fuck is going on at this oh, company? Absolutely. Um, I haven't looked at the market cap. Um, you know, there's a part of me that thinks the market cap here is probably 12 million, but actually as it's a Chinese like shit co, it's, it's probably 12 like 12 billion. billion. Yeah. yeah. So um, I have a look at the, the market cap here. Oh, 10 million. I wasn't far off. I mean, down 22% today on the uh, corrected... Uh, Report, yeah, the, the, mar just... the market obviously doesn't like the uh, address being in Beijing. Yeah, but the you know the, the question you ask yourself is like, why the fuck are these things listed? Like, why are we continuing 
to allow this shit to go on on our exchanges? Well, because the exchanges are publicly traded for-profit companies that don't give a fuck. Well, that's what you call them? I just call them whores these days. But anyway. No, that's those are the lawyers that represent them. Fair. And, you know, pretty much every other corporate. Yeah. So anyway, I think that is the most unusual press release I've read in quite some time. Um, yeah, no, that's a good one. Chinese companies are, you know, air quotes companies, always the best financial comedy. Just, yeah. I've been doing like financial comedy for 14 years almost, and they're the best. Okay. Um, moving on. Um, F- oh, Freddie, you want to talk about The Fund? It's a new book on Bridgewater or... Yeah, we should talk about that. Have you... then, amazingly, the book doesn't have to be titled The Strategy. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, inside the front cover is, is one of the greatest, like, you know, inside sleeve, uh, wet your appetite. It just says, Ray Dalio doesn't want you to read this book, which I'm about two thirds of the way through. And yeah, Ray Dalio definitely doesn't want you to read this book. Okay, so I've, I've read a couple book reviews mm-hmm. on this. Um, so one of them is, I mean, the, the one that went in the New York Times, mm-hmm. which, you know, it started off like, think you have a toxic boss? Like it's throwing out all the like Gen Z millennial, mm-hmm. you know, whining I'd about say we've work, got a toxic you know, boss. buzzwords. Yeah. Um, I hope so. <laughs> but, you know, speaking of like, I, I would take this as a compliment. So there was a there was an article uh, in the French version of Vanity Fair um, the other oh, week about Jean Charles Nauri of Casino, huh. and there's you know like some portion of it is d- dedicated to what we did, and but it mentions me by name like Carson Block in, of Muddy Waters, and um, it it calls me uh, calls me what was it? Um, you said boorish. No, no, not not boorish. It calls me slightly boorish. And I was upset by that. Yeah. I mean, why the slight? Like, yeah. what the fuck, guys? You so know, I, I want to be. Bore. I want to be full on boorish. Yeah. Like, I got to hand it to the French. They have. You can be. Come up with Don't some worry. of the like coolest descriptions of you because they at one point they called you the shark of Wall Street. Yeah. <laughs> and then, well, then there's another time when I was described as having done an interview in a trucker sweater, which I'm not sure what the <laughs> fuck that is. No, but no I mean, they, they always they always make sartorial comments, right? Like they they can't help themselves. A lot of times that they, is a lot, fantastic. A lot of times they he also describe up in a me trucker as sweater. Yeah, a lot of times and, they also describe me as um, like Anglo-Saxon or Anglo-American, <laughs> which I think is their way of saying like dirty Jew. But they don't oh. get that I'm Jewish on my father's side, yes. so the Jews don't think I'm really Jewish. Yeah. So, oh. but they're trying. They're trying to no. But that's like a big thing in continental yeah. Europe. Like the French and the Germans, whenever they're bitching about short sellers, yeah, it's always like Anglo-Saxon or Anglo-American, which I think is which is, is code for right. Jews. Which I, right? which I think Fraser Pairing like kind of was like, oh, that's why they persecuted me in Wirecard. We're like, bro, we just take one look at you and. We know you're not in the tribe. Don't don't sweat. Yeah, I mean he's not <laughs> like he's not right. I think he grew up on a pig farm. Like not many of even, us have done that. Even, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> don't knock those pig farms. Fair. So it took me a minute to to put those together. <laughs> so so anyway, back back to the book actually. So what's really interesting? Did you is, just read this? Uh, yeah, I haven't actually finished it, and perhaps the last the, third is completely different. Didn't finish the jacket or the uh, book? <laughs> no, I got through the pictures. Um, the whole thing is just bizarre and cultish. Like, as you read this, and, and I, I swear you to you... You said bizarre if, and cultish? Yes. Okay. If you didn't know that this was a book about a hedge fund, and I just, I changed the names, and I, you know, gave you a different uh, sleeve you would probably think this is what the inside of Scientology sounds like. It is just one of the most bizarre cultures I've ever read about in any organization or anything. I kind of now I want to read it. It's, it's, it's highly, highly interesting. It really talks very little about anything to do with investing, at least that, for the first well, two thirds. That's what so you had to tell I, me. I would honestly recommend this to people who 
aren't interested in investing because it's just absolutely bizarre. This is some, yeah. Well, I mean, so here, so here's the thing. Like, I'm. What are you doing? I'm looking up. So there was another. So there was the New York Times review, which I started to mm -hmm. reference. You know, Rob Copeland, the author of the the fund, is a New York Times reporter. So oh, for I two reasons, that. now I'm not necessarily going to trust the New York Times mm -hmm. review. Like, number one is it just it's too easy to like mm -hmm. slam. You know, toxic work culture, and you know, for them anyway to slam it. But and the second one is Someone Rob Copeland. But um, Richard Teitelbaum, um, who's a journalist I've known for many years, he wrote a review in The Messenger. And I mean, he makes it sound like there are there are issues. There are some factual issues there that mm -hmm. you can see are clearly contradicted by what things that actually happened or likely contradicted people who have issued statements um, that um, con that contradict Rob Copeland's portrayal of what happened in certain meetings or what they said. So they're like maybe there's a little bit there in the way of like squishiness Look, with the book. Th there the, could be the a slant there. on some of this for sure, but it's so outside of a context of anything that I have ever heard anyone in a hedge fund experiencing that you were just like, what the fuck? Now, the whole thing about it being cultish makes me think, cool, when does this become a Netflix series? Like yes, a dramatized as as Netflix me this, series. I'm thinking about what is that, I mean, billions or whatever. And, and but you know what, you know what the best thing about this is? I know all Netflix series about cults, by the time you get to episode eight, the main dude's fucking everyone else's wife. So I'd probably just skip through one through seven where they're like meeting oh, desperts and doing what you presentations. Meant by okay. so I just so, to, to like when Ray Dalio's laying the pipe. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I don't know, man. Like that, that's that's a you know the, like I'll skip those episodes. No you know that's, so, no so, so the whole thing is right. I've read two thirds of the book. I don't know if I need to read the last third because I'm pretty sure how it ends is. And then Ray Dalio fucked Comey's wife. But didn't that happen? No, it didn't happen in the show you had me watch Billions. But like by the- you by But that wasn't that. about a cult, that was about a hedge fund. I know, but you're you're, you're saying it's cult-like, so. Right, yeah. so I don't know, man. Like I, I just, I, so it apparently didn't get very much into like the way that he invests, right? It doesn't get into that the at all. Which, which that's the thing that to me was the, the most interesting because there yeah. were, look, there that's were people. boring. What I had heard Boorish. and couldn't confirm this, but like I talked to a guy who, you know, said, hey, I know, you know, some the top prime brokerage people at, you know, these, you know, uh, at these prime brokers, which are among the biggest on the street. And they've, you know, they've said to me that, Bridgewater's not among their top 10 um, prime brokerage clients. Now, again, I can't confirm this and what have you, but, you know, like, here, you know, that that was, like, that was really interesting. Like, well, how, do, if they, if they're really not top 10 for some of the largest primes, I mean, with that much money, what the fuck are they doing with their money? Like, to me, that's the really yeah. interesting, like, that would have been the really interesting thing. That's it's like, well, you know, because there were people like yeah. and it did so I think I think it did get into Jim money? Grant a little bit. Like yep. Jim Grant, you know, fucked up somewhat, but it but Jim Grant was suspicious of the fund's returns. And so the, I don't know. Like I the really way I could see would that have being liked possible. that so, yeah. you know, like I I really would like detail on that. Because one of the things I understand also is that if you work there, I mean may, maybe the book gets into this, but if you work there. You have no idea whether right. your, the trades you recommend are put on or not. Like, really, har hardly anybody there I knows mean, what's in the fucking book. So, again, and they also... They, how they, do they not know that? And they though? don't have a third-party administrator, right? Well, because if they don't tell you, you know, if, if you're not yeah. told whether... So they don't have a third-party administrator. I mean, like, like this. What, right? I mean, the same way as this. Krista, what's in our book? I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, there you go. <laughs> like... What, what's the most recent thing that we? Uh, so that, if you're watching and you're an allocator, and this is not a solicitation, <laughs> we're just like Bridgewater, basically. Think of us like Bridgewater. Except we're like. Except the with Monster version. Alpha. Bridgewater <laughs> with Monster Alpha. 
That's us, guys. <laughs> you know, like. Uh, I don't know what's in our book, but I all I know is this. Monster Alpha. Monster Alpha. <laughs> that's all I know, and that's what Carson's like. That's all you have to know. That's all. Yep. That's. That's pretty much. Uh, so it's it. yeah, it's it's truly weird. I mean, the, the New York Times article makes it seem like at best he's punting and not that good at it. The only thing I could say on how you could potentially not be in the prime brokerage is like top ten clients. Again, not confirmed, right. but you know is. Look, the, these are, if they're managing, whatever, $160 billion, whatever, and it's like currencies and the most, which you'd have to be basically doing macro, if it's the most liquid instruments on the planet, you probably can trade a lot of that electronically and be Aren't paying you razor clearing thin through margins. a prime? Yeah, but you, you don't pay a lot for that. I mean, you. Th that's the only thing that I can think in terms of like, how on a relative basis like the commission dollars wouldn't be that large relative to the AUM. Um, and then there was this time like, you know, it was maybe a year or two ago and I think it was Harry Markopoulos tweeted mm -hmm. out that about to expose the biggest fraud in like history and yeah. And I don't think he ever did, but I was sitting there going like, oh shit, is it going to be, is it going to be fucking Bridgewater? But no, I don't think he, yeah. anything was public or that he published anything so you know was I mean, it's interesting I yeah mean, it's, it's so I, like i i don't know if like you know rob copeland missed the forest through the trees or you know or or what but um but i don't know to me it just sounded more like you know the kind of usual new york times focusing on you know like job misery porn bullshit but it's fucking weird like genuinely it it's it's a good book, it's interesting. Um, it, it's got to be the most bizarre culture of, of any business or organization I've ever read. And yeah, maybe there's some cherry picking and some slant on it, but um, it's it's a fucking weird place. It's a really fucking weird place. Hmm. hmm. Anyways. Yeah, I mean, you know, maybe to straight laced people like ourselves, you know, yeah. it could appear that way. Mildly boorish. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, wow, maybe I should submit Slightly my- Slightly boorish. Should I submit my resume to Bridgewater? I mean, they're, they seem fun. Yeah, I mean, they don't seem like they're on an upward trajectory here. Ah, whatever. I gotta tell you, I'd enjoy giving you the weekly scorecard stuff that they do at Bridgewater. Like that, that we can introduce here if oh, you like. Oh, come on, dude. Our system is so much better. Like when we get Krista a fuck up cake. What that's system so, is so, that? So, our uh, system. We don't even uh, have systems. Sure we do. When you when you have a nice like a nice sized fuck up, <laughs> yeah. we memorialize one it with time. the fuck up cake. One time. One time we memorialized yeah. it. One time. That's our fault. One time too I many. Need, I, you know what? I need another assistant to get all the fuck up cakes I'm all to memorialize for that. your fuck ups. Can we get something really hot? Krista, um, yeah. employing someone underneath you does not mean that you have climbed the totem pole. It just means it's got longer, okay? Now, what she said under her breath was, can we get someone really hot? And I the answer never is, say and, that. And That's the answer is, disgusting. now that we're no longer in California, right. oh, fucking, yeah, of course. Well, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, the, if we must. Yeah, it's, the only, it's the only qualification at this I point. I will guide her. Yeah, just tell her where the bakery is and, you know, no, she can order the fuck-up cakes. I will let her know what we do once I once, know. <laughs> once you figure it out, yes. <laughs> um, all right, let's keep on going. Uh, Argentina elects its own Trump new president. His name is Javier. Is that, how do you say his surname? Mille? I don't know. Mille? Mille? Mille, Mille. Um, Mille. Who has no government experience wants to adopt the US dollar as national currency, and he loves threesomes. So this guy- Does anybody see a problem with With two this? other dudes? <laughs> oh. Actually, one, one other I, little tidbit about this guy. Yeah. Um, he, I, like, I mean, as of yesterday or the day before, he's converting to Judaism. Yeah. <laughs> Really? No, for real, for, for real. real. And so I someone know. pointed which, out to me- which, which is kind of funky because you know, not only is Argentina a Catholic Hiding. country, but Pope Francis, if you weren't such a bad Catholic, you'd know this, Pope yeah. Francis is from Argentina. 
Right, and yeah. all the Nazi Ex war criminals are actually hiding there. So. But so are a lot of Jews. Not as yeah. Argentina has a it has a it has a reasonably size. Yeah, yeah. sized there, Jewish population. There would be population. fewer there if the Germans didn't do what they did in like the thirties. But hey, not the, necessarily true, right? Because then you wouldn't have had all these Jews leave Europe to go to Argentina. Okay, we're dig we anyway. We digress. Um, I, let's, so before I knew, I'm just about trying to his... show off. Like, <laughs> know, I'm just honestly. trying to make the point that you can be half Jewish really on your father's side <laughs> and still understand these things. All right, Anglo-Saxon, that's know. enough out of you. Anglo-Saxon uh, short seller. So, like, firstly, there isn't a picture that I am aware of of this guy where he doesn't look like a 50 year old mod rocker from the UK. Like his hair is permanently fucking unkempt and he's yeah. always doing this with his yeah. fucking hands. Like he's he's, he's giving it some man. like fucking jazz hands look. And, and his eyes look like he's fucking jacked on something. All right. Coke. So that alone uh, is pretty cool. <laughs> unkempt hair. Seems like he's jacked on coke all the time. I mean, so far these things all align. Yeah, so we're for not, sure. We're not finding inconsistencies or holes in the story The so other thing I like about him is, uh, so he, he had a dog. I think he rescued a dog. It might have been like a pit bull or, I mean, it was like, it's just kind of, or a boxer. It's like, you know, not a like little kind of sort of shaking dog, like a proper dog. And he loved it so much that he spent oh, 50, $60,000 getting it cloned. Yeah. And now he has four cloned versions of that dog. I feel like that's a very big Latino thing, but I might- Latinx. Ooh, Sorry. So that's a slip. <laughs> wow, that's no, one the, of a strikes. The, this, this dude definitely <laughs> would not be a Latinx fan. No. I just want to be clear. 100%. Like he's, yeah. So he's named them all How after free he? market economists. Um, oh, right. <laughs> which, which is great. So, um, I know, look, truth be told. Like he should come on our podcast. Dude, I, I would love to meet this guy. He seems like a lot of fun to hang out with. Like a lot of yes. fucking fun. But why, yes. can't, but why can't like why can't yes. we get a world leader who fucks who's not really old? You know, but like how old is he? The the Norwegian how Prime Minister, right? Didn't was oh, she know she well, she's hot. Yeah. Yeah, she was no, hot. I'm I'm I think she I mean, like, I'm like Berlusconi. You know, that old and disgust. He fucks. He, he fucks. fucks. Actually, he died. How old I think is he this guy? Yeah. How old is this guy? Well, Berlusconi's. Yeah. Yeah. This guy's fifties. Something. Yeah, yeah, something like mid fifties or yeah. something. Um, it's great. Then you know, then Trump, of course. Trump fucks. That's you know, gross. Thinking I about really it. I don't think he does that. And just... Trump. Yeah. Trump fucks. Yeah. You think so? Yeah, he does just, for sure. He might he might need to be you know like take like tons of Viagra or whatever, Something. but like um, but yeah, like where where are the what are you what are you asking here? Where let's, are like the you know it. the thirty nine year old mm. dudes who are you I know mean, world leaders not, who fuck <laughs> Macron fucks, but she's twenty five years older. Is he a world than leader? Him. No, but here's the thing. So there's a double standard there because there are young world leaders. Who are women? MBS. Why, like, I why, think MBS why? Fox. Ooh. Journalists. <laughs> yeah. Too soon, Cre guys. He, Come on. Creates, Come on. Creates new holes. And, yeah. You know, I'm sure I mean, he I, fucks I feel those. like MBS Fox. Yeah, no, I mean, I guess that's a, you know. He, he's what? He, he's like late difference. 30s, 40. Yeah, but, you know, he. I want somebody who's been elected by the people in a, you know, Listen corrupt to election him. to, you know. Trying to think which other world. I mean, like there aren't that we many world leaders in, that are young. Look into no, but this. Jacinda, this good... uh, the the New Zealand former New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ahern. How old was she? She I'm was pretty saying. young. Look, yeah. Um, so like all me... the all the young PMs are women. Oh, well, Trudeau. How? He's got to be mid to late forties. Okay, so he's actually Jacinda... pretty young. I mean, then uh, Macron. He's actually he, he fucks because he's he's he? getting a uh, no Macron fucks. Uh, he was what? he was cool when he was in high school. No, Trudeau. No, but Macron was cool oh. in high school because he fucked a teacher. That's true. But then prime minister you, just, of New you don't marry that teacher later. Yeah, on. that's not. Cool. I um, She's you know cute. what Trudeau I think is getting divorced right? So he fucks. I don't know. Yeah, I think Trudeau like might have had a side piece. Mm. Macron's wife. She's much older. 
Just in the oh Ardern. Uh, well, it, here's her birth. No, oh, that's not her birth. No, that's not. when she was in uh, office. Um, um, no. I haven't gotten that. No, let me look this up. She's old enough that they won't. Oh, put she's forty three. Okay, all right. Anyway, I just feel like it's a double standard. Yeah, you, you know, know you like know everybody who's... gets mad in these Western democracies, you know, especially the U.S. Like, oh, it's just a bunch of old white men. Well, right. I don't know, man. Like, you don't. Nobody wants to elect young white men. Like. <laughs> No, seriously. Right. Fuck you. You know, like you're not electing mm. young white men. It's not, you know, it's not that like he makes you, a point. you know, it's not the old white men right. who are shutting everybody else out. It's the voters who just won't consider young white men. Especially the Democrats. I, I, I gotta tell you Especially the as, Democrats. As a, as a young white Is male, I feel like I'm terribly discriminated against. So yeah. yeah, dude. That's true. Yeah, I mean like I hate young people, so I know. I know. The funny away. thing is, what you don't, consider don't young, you just, don't you just? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> don't you just want to walk around when you see like old white men tell them check their elderly privilege? I mean, I do. Yeah, that's I, fucked I, up. Every, every man, I want to say, is not elderly. They're elderly. There's a, like, aside no, from but, us, we're, it's like hey, you're, just, you're just hang crowd, out here. Like elderly. Let me explain this to you. All right. <laughs> uh, you know who's not fucking, by the way? Who? Snoop. <laughs> Swedish cross country. Oh skier. yeah, where did you see this? Oh. So I'm like, I'm not gonna put this. And he's like, No, this sounds Dude, interesting. This this, uh, this is market this, movies. This, this is market. We're gonna movies. end with this. Where, where did I see this? Where do I get all my fucking news from? The Daily the Mail. The Daily right. Mail. I don't want to misrepresent because this is honestly. This, so important. let's the uh, the item is that we're going to discuss. This is a Swedish cross country skier reveals he froze his genitals during mm -hmm. an event. So, Freddie, tell us about a this. A Swedish cross country skier was left fearing for his manhood on Sunday. Um, a Swedish cross country skier has revealed that uh, his genitals froze during a recent World Cup again event I wonder what in that Finland. Feels like. Carl Haberson had been partaking in a 20 kilometer mass event starting on a Sunday afternoon when he lost all feeling in his private parts. Mm. The 34 year old eventually crossed the line in 18th place. I mean, bro, if he won, you'd be like, cool, heroic. Like, who cares to about come, that? Like, to come, like, fucking behind to 17. Lo to lose your cock, to right. come in 18th place. Like, <laughs> that, the, up, like the upside myself, down right? side on that. Like, <laughs> I mean, you, you got you to gotta get out of the race. Like, <laughs> I'm way, be I'm way behind. My dick's up. about to fall off. <laughs> <laughs> like, just... Just be like, you know, setting up the smoke flare at that moment. Like, get get helicoptered out, bro. Like, I mean, come on. The temperature in Ruka have, pro have proven hazardous for male athletes before, Ooh. with their thin suits and underlayers providing minimal protection against the cold. And that was no different for Halvardsson, who later revealed he suffered the freak injury during the event and described it as the worst thing you can experience. Yeah, not wrong. I mean, again, why do you hang in there to finish like in yeah. last place? Speaking to Swedish outlet Expressen, the 34 year old said, I have frozen my penis for real. <laughs> damn, I had to lie there in the warm up tent for 10 minutes. It hurts so damn much, it's terrible. It's lucky I'm going to have my second child because this is going to be difficult in the future if I'm going to continue like this. When asked if he could describe the pain, he just, he replied, no. Those who know, they know. Like, so I guess this is somewhat common in Finland. Like, you can be like, you know, if you don't know, then you know. Like, what the fuck? But, and I don't know if this was a pun, you should get a tip from me. Stay away from it. Because it's the absolute worst thing you can experience. Um, I mean, okay, so is, is he's it, in so, tremendous pain, so but what happens that, afterwards? So Can he about, still use it? Didn't, didn't they used to have those like St. Bernard rescue dogs in the mountains? Like, can't you put some peanut butter on your dick and get it to kind of like warm it up by licking so it? So apparently you get, so you get gay. these heat pads. <laughs> Stop it, right? And you, now. You, have to, you have to thaw it out. I mean. Wait, what? Yeah, you get heat pads and they like yeah. thaw it out. Um, well, well, I, hang on a well, second. How do you thaw hang it on, out? Hang on, hang on. Like, what do you mean? Hang on. But this would, this probably wouldn't happen if you had more blood flow at the moment. So basically, what they need to do is you need to basically be going down the mountain jerking it to make sure you have <laughs> to make sure you maintain blood flow so it doesn't freeze. So the, you know, you know what this reminds me of. So when I when I went down when I went down a mine in uh, he's a in Newfoundland. Here. He's not going down. 
What, whatever. And just what I'm saying is just jerk it while you're skiing. It's well, not that easy. Uh, how do you know? <laughs> 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 so th this reminds me of well, when I went make... down a, a mine in Newfoundland and someone asked what's the most like common injury that miners get. The guy like holds up his hand and he goes like this. And for people who aren't like what it... watching, it's like, you know, one f the what end of right. one finger's missing. And uh -huh. I'm like, oh, and we're like, oh, like, you know, how does that happen? He's He told me that basically they have these handheld operated drills and the vibration is so intense that after like 10 to 20 years, you basically just kill all the capillaries in, uh, in Jesus your... Christ, you did it again. Capillaries. It's a fucking capillary. I know. What the? Capillary. What, what the, cap the fuck what is, is wrong with you guys? What the fuck happened to you? No, I don't Dude, know what's Thank going God on. we're going to London next week and you're going to learn how who, to speak. Who else, was, was I, capillaries. who else were you with last week? Capillaries? Like, yeah, what? I don't know what's going on. Do you? Like, uh, who, 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 like I'm, I'm, we're going to take this like to the mat in no, London I'm, I'm next think, week. I'm thinking you need to go for an MRI. Make sure there, make sure something, there's no like tumor odd. growing in your fucking brain. Something strange. This, so anyway, this is this is your, off. Your capillaries, um, they basically end up severing, and so you lose circulation in the tips of your fingers, and ultimately you end up um, mm -hmm. having to chop your fingers off. Now, if I knew that that was the least bad injury I was going to get doing something, yeah. I would probably find another career that I would want to choose. If you know that there is a chance cross-country skiing, but that you're... one of the injuries you might get is your dick freezing off, I would choose another sport. But can I ask you something? Is he but you chose to trade. His... <laughs> and that's a lot like being in SEAL Team that's 6. That's a lot like being in SEAL Team 6. Uh, <laughs> Can we attribute that? Uh, we're not going to name. We're no. not going to name names. Okay, so but but I'll I'll tell the story. So <laughs> please this do. Is, this is a real comment that was yeah. said a few years ago. So um, um, at at Kyle Bass's annual gathering that he used to have, um, he had the guy um, who wrote um, "No Easy Day," Matt Bissonette, um, was was the guy's real name, um, and so. Bissonette was apparently there saying, you know, the really hard thing about being a SEAL is that you get, you know, you get called and said, hey, you got to be at base in, you know, like four hours and we're going to deploy. And, you know, not only do you not know where you're, you know, to where you're going to deploy at that moment, but, you know, you, with your family, you don't know when you're coming back or, you know, gee, if you're going to come back. And he said, that's the really hard part is, you know, saying to your family, hey, I got to go and you know, and so Bissonette was um, apparently telling a group of, you know, finance heroes um, the story. And one of them, I mean, I was told that he meant this in all fucking seriousness. And given the level of douchiness in this industry, I can believe that. He goes, yeah, that's a lot like trading. <laughs> <laughs> Did you really say that? Yes, he really said that. I mean, and I, but, and I was assured he didn't. that. I know who the guy is, and I believe that he meant it without irony yeah. or sarcasm. Um, that he really thought that he's a fucking hero for you know trading. Jesus Christ! Yeah. Um, if Jesus Christ were alive today, he'd be a traitor. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just end up on that note. Oh, that is a good place to end. That's I think. great. All right, guys. Well, cheers. Thanks for joining. And, and just remember, who has Monster Alpha? We, we do. have Monster Alpha, baby. Muddy Waters on that one. Yeah, could we say that? Muddy Waters has Monster Alpha, and the proof is right there. Right behind over you. Your and shoulder. that's what we're talking about. That is what we're talking yes, about. Yes, I know. Yes. Thank yeah. you. They have we would never, ever reference investment returns or a strategy. Yeah. Uh, we're just saying we have Monster Alpha. Right. And the first 20 who contact Muddy Waters gets one of these before we hard close little. it can get Monster Alpha 2. Hard closed after 20. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks. Bye.